Welcome guys, this is Arkan Gate 1 Play Guide video. Arkan has 3 gates in total. Normal mode requires 1580, and hard mode requires 1600. Most of the gimmicks are same for both difficulties. I will mainly cover the hard mode gimmicks and also call out the gimmicks that have difference in the normal mode. Gate 1 is not weak to a certain element, and it's undead type. Then let's get started. Battle items. Panacea and Sacred Charm are needed to deal with Plague System in this gate, and Flame Grenade is needed for a certain gimmick. Also, if you have a Purify Rune, then it's better to put it on a skill that has short cooldown. Major Gimmick Around 140 HP, the boss jumps to the center and summons 4 green orbs and 4 black orbs, so 8 orbs in total. All the players have to stay in their x3 and x3 plus 1 direction and destroy the each orbs. If you destroy the orb, then you will see the identical color of the orb you destroyed beneath your character. Then the boss will jump once again by throwing spears. After a few seconds, he will land in the center. All the players have to touch the spear to survive from the following wipe attack. The spear does tick damage to the players, so your HP will become low if you touch the spear too early. It's better for supporters to use awakening before touching the spear to provide a large amount of shield to the teammates. If a player fails to touch the spear in time, then he will die. So that was the end of the gimmick. But what really matters more is the green and black debuff that you got from destroying the orb. Let me tell you what they do. Whenever a player who has a black debuff and a player who has green debuff touch each other, then they will get stacks of debuff. When you have this debuff, any heal either from potion or skills will be decreased by 50%. And when it reaches 10 stacks, then for 10 seconds, you will receive 10% of your current HP every second. Stacking debuff is inevitable since players will touch each other a lot during the raid. Fortunately, these stacks can be cured by Panacea, Sacred Charm, Purify Rune, and Clean Skills. So if you want to use a potion without heal reduction, then cleanse it first and then use the potion. Around 128 HP, the boss requires stagger check. At the same time, after a few seconds, all the players will get a yellow debuff. This yellow debuff decreases your stagger by a lot. But when you use any clean skills or cleansing items, the yellow debuff will turn into red buff. This red buff increases your stagger by a lot, so it makes it easier to stagger him in time. When he's staggered, that's the end of the gimmick. When you fail the stagger, then that's a raid wipe. There are several things you have to take care. 1. You have to use the cleansing skills or items when the yellow debuff appears above your mana. 2. When you're using Sacred Charm, all the players have to stick close since the cleansing range is small. Also, Sacred Charm only removes one random debuff. The problem is you will mostly have the debuff that I mentioned in the previous gimmick. So if all the players do not stick close, or if some people don't use the Sacred Charm, then some players will still have the yellow debuff and the stagger will most likely fail. One way to guarantee cleanse the yellow debuff is using Panacea, because Panacea removes all the debuff that you have. Around 112 HP, the boss jumps and you will see 4 orbs. 3 will be either green or black, and the other one will be the opposite color. By the way, in the normal mode, there is only 1 orb instead of 4. Players have to destroy the orbs that have identical color to the color of their debuff. If you destroy the wrong color, then you will get both of green and black debuff, and the healing debuff will stack automatically to 10 stacks even if you don't touch other players. This lasts until the boss's HP reaches 15 HP. And it is really bad since you will have to deal with 10% bleed damage from the 10 stacks of debuff for every second. Also, if you fail to destroy the orbs in time, then those orbs will explode giving that color debuff to players nearby. This will also cause double debuff to multiple players which is really bad. Then the boss will land in the center and grab the direction where there was one different color orb. Any one player who has the same color of the orb on that direction has to be grabbed. Then there will be a stagger check and the other 7 people have to stagger the boss. If no one gets grabbed, or if a wrong color player gets grabbed, then that's a raid wipe. Also, if you fail the stagger, that's also a raid wipe. If you succeed the stagger, lots of green and black small orbs will spawn all around. These orbs will try to reach the boss. Players have to destroy the orbs that have identical color to the color of their debuff. You just have to use auto attack. If a player destroys wrong color for 3 times, then he will die. You can see that the boss has a shield, 
and whenever the orb reaches the boss, then it will give him more amount of shield, and this is really bad for the next gimmick. When all the orbs are cleared, then after a few seconds, there will be a cutscene, and after the cutscenes, you will find him in an area filled up with water. You can also see a 1 minute timer on top left side. You have to reduce his HP to 90 bars in time. If you fail, then all the people will drown, and that's a raid wipe. So you have to take down the HP from 112 bars to 90 bars in 1 minute. To back up the DPS, the raid leader normally uses Thyrain before the time goes up. In this video, he used Thyrain before the cutscene since you get a certain amount of sidereal gauge back when the cutscene is over. So this method has to do with efficiency. But the problem of this method is that it's really hard to match the timing of using Thyrain since Thyrain does 2 hits. And both of his attacks have to land in 1.5 second window when the boss doesn't have the shield, which is right before the cutscene. So I would rather recommend you to use Thyrain after the cutscene. Well, you can try to practice using it before the cutscene when you get used to the raid. When his HP reaches 90 HP, then another cutscene pops up and the place where you are will start to flood. All the players have to evacuate by following the map. Make sure not to touch each other with different color debuff. On the way, you will face two paths, and the first player who reaches the place will have a zoom out scene. The path where the particles fall becomes dead end, so that player have to ping the opposite path to let other 7 people know. If you go to the wrong path, then you will have to go back to the correct path, but by the time this happens, the place will be flooded and the players will die by drowning. By the way, in the normal mode, you can attack the obstacle in the dead end path, so both paths are safe. When you reach the top of the map where there is a G key interaction for the jump, wait until the water fills up to the highest stair. When it reaches the degree, then jump to the other side. The reason is because if you jump to the other side before the water reaches that degree, then the first pattern of the boss will be fixed to jumping around 6 times which is a bad pattern. So you want to avoid that. If you jump to the other side, then you will fight with the boss until the next gimmick. One thing you have to be careful from this point is, whenever you get knocked out to the outer side, then you will fall into the water and have to do the spacebar minigame. You have to spam the spacebar to increase the blue bar, and you have to press the spacebar again when the yellow block covers the edge of the bar. Then you will survive back to the combat zone. The difficulty of the minigame becomes harder whenever you fall, and when you fall for the third time, then you will most likely die because the yellow box becomes super small. Around 75 HP, the boss jumps to the center and summons 2 spears, 2 large mobs, and lots of small mobs. You have to kill the two large mobs before they reach the boss. If either one reaches the boss, then that's a raid wipe. The small mobs stun you for a long time if you get hit by them for several times, so it's better to kill them as well. You can see that green pulse is consistently coming out from the boss. After a certain amount of time, black smoke comes out, and that's when all the players touch the spear because he will wipe the players who are not in the spear. The spear does tick damage to the players, so your HP will become low if you touch the spear too early. When everyone dodges the wipe attack after killing the two large mobs, then that's the end of the gimmick. Around 50 HP, the boss jumps to the center and requires a stagger check. When it shows the stagger check bar, the raid leader have to use Inanna no matter what. Because if you don't use Inanna here, then you have to do the stagger check under the circumstance of having lots of hindering factors. If you fail the stagger, then that's a raid wipe. But if you use Inanna, then you will see her advanced ability. The boss gets stunned during the stagger check, so you can freely check the stagger. Furthermore, all the players can do 25% more damage to the boss for a long amount of time until the Inanna ends. Do the DPS as much as you can, and dodge the AoE attack that he does at the end of the Inanna. That's the end of the gimmick. Around 15 HP, the boss jumps to the center and defends himself with shield. At the same time, there will be a green puddle around him. Also, a lot of small mobs and the AoE attack on the other side of the puddle. The first thing you have to do is to kill the small mobs while dodging the AoE attacks. You use the flame grenade here to kill the mobs faster and safer. When you kill 3 mobs, then you will get a buff that does 700% more damage on the boss's shield. But it's better to kill all the mobs around you since these mobs stun you if you get hit by them for several times. There are two kinds of AoE attacks going on, small ones and big ones. 
Small AoE attack doesn't do that much damage, but big ones does over 100k damage. So if you get hit by two big AoE attacks at the same time, then you will most likely die. By the way, in the normal mode, there are no big AoE attacks. If you kill the mobs while dodging the AoE attacks for a certain time, then a bell rings. This bell gives all the players slight amount of shield and also stuns the rest of the small mobs. This is when all the players have to go into the green puddle and DPS the boss's shield until the shield is removed. You have to get out of the green puddle immediately after the shield is removed because whenever you are in the puddle, you will get stacks of debuff and if this debuff reaches 10, then it will kill you. You can remove this debuff by staying out of the puddle for a moment. Even if you fail to take down the shield, you have to back out if your stack is reaching close to 10. I would recommend you to get out when your stack is 7. The bell rings 4 times in total. On each bell ring, whenever you succeed removing the boss's shield, he will become weaker in the next phase. In other words, whenever you fail removing the shield, it will be tougher on the next phase since he will start with higher attack and HP. So let me set this straight again. On the start of the gimmick, kill the bugs, get the buff, and dodge the AoE attacks until the first bell rings. When the bell rings, go into the puddle, remove the shield, and back out from the puddle and dodge the AoE attacks until the next bell rings. You have to repeat this 4 times in total. After the last bell rings, the boss will turn purple and go to the last phase after a cutscene. If you removed all his shield, then he will have around 20 to 25 HP bars. Until the raid ends, he will have green aura surrounding him. This aura slows down the player's movement speed by half who are in the range. You have to kill him as soon as possible since there's only 2 minutes of berserk time. The raid leader uses the last Idereo as Thyrain to back up the DPS. If you take his HP down to 0, then that's the end of the entire raid. But there are two periodical patterns that you have to know during this phase. Imprison. The boss imprisons one random player. If other players free him, then player nearby will get imprisoned. You have to free them as well before the boss attacks to where they are. This attack guarantee kills the players. Counter. The boss jumps bombarding the area with AoE attacks. Then he lands on a random corner of the map. He will then charge an attack that will most likely kill everyone. You have to counter him to prevent that attack. Important normal patterns. This boss does a lot of grab patterns, and all of them show yellow telegraph in advance. It is important not to get hit by these patterns, especially after 90 HP bar, since you will fall into the water. You can disturb most of the patterns by using taunt. Dash and grab. The boss dashes forward grabbing all the players on the way. If someone is grabbed, then he throws the player far away. If not, then he swipes backward. Tentacle grab. The boss grabs all the players around him. You can dodge it by sticking close to the boss. If you get grabbed, then you will be jailed for a long time and it will most likely kill you. You have to especially be careful for this pattern during the time attack gimmick since you will not be able to see the yellow telegraph because of the water. Poking 3 times. The boss pokes its spear 3 times on the player who has the aggro. If someone is grabbed, then he immediately throws the player far away. If not, then he just swipes the front after poking 3 times. Backstep and grab. The boss backsteps and grabs the players on the front. If someone is grabbed, then he blows the player far away. If not, then he knocks out the players behind. Jump and AoE attack. The boss jumps to a spot. If someone gets hit, then he throws that player far away. If not, then he AoE attacks the outer side. Thrash and counter. The boss thrashes the front for multiple times. Then he slams the front which does AoE attack on the outer side. Normally, this pattern is able to be countered right before the last slam, but if someone gets hit by the thrash by certain times, then it's unable to be countered. Jump and counter. The boss jumps 3 to 4 times and slams the front. This pattern is able to be countered right before the slam. Uppercut. The boss uppercuts the front. If someone gets hit by it, then he blows the player far away. If not, then he swipes the back. Tentacle and Explosion. 
The ball slams its tentacle on the front and pulls out. If someone gets hit by the pull, then that player flies away and generates a large range of AoE attack that knocks out the other players as well. Spin The boss spins by moving to one direction. You have to stick close to the boss and follow him. He will turn the direction once again. At the end, he does AoE attack on the other side. If you fail to chase him, then you will get pushed to the other side and eventually get hit by the last AoE attack that most likely kills you. Well guys, that's all for this video. Please hit the likes if you like it. Then see you guys on the Alcon Gate 2 guide video. Bye bye.